but all right guys here we go as we said grand finals time our runner-up from the last week he is back here one more time turby coming through with a spectacular team as we can tell that mogu platinum is the volgon the saku looks like he did a really great run but he has quite the opponent right we are re uh, reiterated this before who hasn't been playing temtem all that long i believe he only has roughly about one month of playing the game and look at here folks he has a lot of talent capa he has a lot of talent available to him so doing really good and already locking down the finals but you know he's is he gonna go all the way <laughs> only time uh, will tell i am excited yeah, I really like uh, Turby's team, just gotta say. Like, I think it's a, such a really interesting... I think one of the ways you make Mulgu good is give him literally five priority hit synergies, right? With the Volgon included. Uh, we see the Saku band out first. I actually think that's a smart band from Fool. Uh, Saku does offer him uh, Turby quite a bit against uh, some of the physical attackers here. Walls out some of that stuff and, and can help with the Ruchiel as well. It's a very tanky Tim. Yeah, for uh, sure. The Mushuk opener is very interesting as well because you, you know the two vine with the parrier nerf. This is actually probably two vine favored. Finally, because this matchup used to be Mushuk favored, even though it had the type advantage. But this is going to be uh, interesting to see what uh, fool goes with in the in the second slot here. Yeah, it looks like he's eyeing that Wimplum just to have the capabilities of another wind technique really strong at that, being the tornado on the following turn. But if he picks up the Wimplum, he's leaving the window open for something like Volgon, right? Volgon has those Thunder Strikes, and I think this Thunder Strike is going to be a bit stronger than the Akronite uh, of Thunder Strike we saw earlier. Uh, so, yeah, let's see if he does decide to pick it up. I feel like a decent Temtem. What about. I was going to say. Acronox, but I guess with the Mashuk, they're not feeling all that comfortable. This He's is really a rough going to one. reserve time. Yeah, and Turby just slams Volar end right away. I, I think that's correct for him. Um, Volgon kind of makes the situation a little bit strange, right? Because the Crystal Plume Gatling does 2x from 2 bind and the Thunderstrike does 4x. So the Fool is like highly inclined to swap the Whiplomp, and if the Whiplomp swaps out, it's like hard to get as much value out of. Um, the two vine. Mm -hmm. I really like full second ban here as well. Uh, that is the only tem that Turby has that gives him synergy. Assuming it's superconductivity, the only tem Turby has that gives him synergy on Toxic Plume, which could be something that could really bother temps like Chimuri and Calibus later on into the game. I could definitely see that. You know, speaking of things that uh, that synergize well, of course, he doesn't have any fire tem for the Shimuri, and so relying heavily on just toxic neutral pressure. So as you said, this Shimurian is posing quite a threat for the likes of Turby. I'm um, very interesting how he's going to bypass. Of course, things like little melee techniques from the Mashuk might just do the job. But it looks like Mashuk might just have his hands full dealing with the two vine off the get go, right? So this is going to be a really good matchup. Here we go, everyone. Grand finals time. Game number one. So this is really interesting with Turby. I think there's two Turby sort of modes that he has with his this Mashuk, John Cena. Usually it either just like throws wastewaters out like crazy, or it's a very defensive sort of Irushiel style. Uh, I think he's kind of in an advantageous spot to just click wastewater. There isn't a ton of great swap-ins in the back for double toxic. Calibus is the best thing that Fool can swap into that, and Calibus in front of Volarin Mushuk is like not going to have a good time. So I, I like this opener for Turby quite a bit. I think he's in com he's kind of in command here, especially with the marbles. Look at how much marbles does to stamina. Right. Look at that yeah it's Just, impressive that uh that person who that the pr person you get like marbles diabolo and like all those gears from that person's greatest temp temp tamer of all time if they had those <laughs> gears and nobody else did right like, they, imagine how much you know they they just slap people around in the mm -hmm. archipelago right yeah they were Moose, it Moose all is trying to, to fight you you're trying to fight Moose is trying to like you know defend his dojo against you and you've got like marbles diabolo Moose is like I don't know. I just click buttons with, you know, Rolder Yeller. <laughs> Easy peasy. But it looks like these guys came to a decision. Just like you said, the Wimplum was fearing that wastewater. So in comes the most adequate swap in. It will be the Calibiz. Does Turby just cover all his bases? No, he goes for the two fine E. So the uppercut, bring him down to 67. Well, how does the Volarin want to follow suit? I'm assuming he's not going into the two vine, of course. 
I think if you're Chirby, you're just totally fine with Kala coming in here, right? Like, Calibus doesn't really do anything to you. He can't freeze you. This is, like... Yeah, it's parry or shook, right? Like, you just take another double. Like, this is kind of one of the things that we talk about when I when I do some coaching in PDX is, like, make sure your moves have, like, purpose to them. Full swap here to Calibus is a very defensive swap, but now the Kala's in here, now what? Mm -hmm. Right? Like, you, you don't threaten Volaren, you don't threaten um, a shook. You don't, like, your best option is to strangle one of them. And, like, when your best option is strangle on turn two with Calibus, you're in a bad spot. Right? I so, believe so as well. But Chirby decides to take the swap on the Volat. This is just getting size much up because he knows he's got time to do so. And yeah, just make sure you have the available kill for the following turn. So just trading tit for tat here. Uppercuts for the Feather Gatling. It looks like since Mashuk is faster, he will be winning that matchup. But with that Tsunami, catching the size much on the entry. Not doing a third, but interesting enough. It will be a reactive vial size much. So we've always seen reactive vial on rotors these days. But because we took the... Uh, we took the rotor from the tournament just for this one time. It looks like he's choosing to rock that reactive vial on the monkey. So really well done. Now things like Seismontrek are online on top of the melee synergy thanks to the Mashuk to his side. But I don't think a one single wreck is enough to take care of the entire two vine. But instead just goes for the P-Jab. Wastewater. Wait a second ease. Is that a bit of a hiccup? I think Chirby's expecting a swap there. Like... Both, both moves are kind of like you don't you don't p jab a two vine if you think it's staying in uh he's gonna get frozen on this size i think here right so this is kind of a, a monk ass for turby he somehow managed to give uh full value on calibus when calibus had no value kind of a kind of a tough spot if you're turby but yeah, you know, I do respect oh. Turby making that decision, though, of course, right? Because it was so obvious that the two-vine was going down. Just a simple double uppercut on that two-vine spot would have easily brought it down. But just to try to get even more than an advantage with that wastewater. But Turby will be conceding East. I'm not too sure it was over right there. Do you think uh, it was over? No, Tur Turby got hit with the Arbory combo, which is uh, get Diaboloed into Tilt Concede. Also, yeah. thinking about Freeze, right? Like, Calibus has Tsunami Ice to Lactite. He could freeze my Volarend, and then I'm in trouble. I, I see. Mean, the, okay. The, the, the P-Jab wastewatering the bait two vine and the two vine not swapping out is like... And then the Diabolo going off is like, and you just lose, right? At that point, you make a read, it doesn't work out, go next. I think so, yeah. If it was a double uppercut, it would have been a different story, right? You wouldn't get the free, well, you get the freeze, but at least you don't get the Diabolo the following turn. So yeah, just a bit of an overread, but it's actually a really logical overread. Because if a Wastewater would have connected, I believe Yukama was in the back line. Uh, what else? The Wimplump was in the back line. The Shimura was in the back line. So it looked like a decent read. But hey, Fool not having none of it. So starting things off with what did him well. It looks like it's going to be the two vine Calibus to get game number two rolling. Let's see how Turby now wants to get things going. It looks like it's the same. A Mashuk and Volarin. I think we have to pressure out. Honestly, right. I think both of these Temtems could get pressured out from both of Turby's Tems. Okay, everyone in chat, please let Turby know not to uh, swap size much into this. <laughs> yeah, I keep, believe keep the size and keep the size in the back. I uh, think so. I believe you learned his lesson. You make a mistake yeah. one time, but a professional player like Turby himself probably not going to make that blunder again. But okay, since he picks up the Mogu, Painus will be picking up the Yukama, so not too shabby. It doesn't look too good into the likes of the other Toxic Temtems, but since you're covering it with the Minotaur, it does feel decently well. And concluding the team with the Shimuri, and so this is looking like a heater of a game. Let's go ahead and jump into our game number two. You know, Fool is just a single game away from locking in his first ever championship as early as just one month away i know i keep saying it it's just mind-boggling to see uh, such a young player do so so well i uh again uh, definitely thinking about okay what is going on with this calibus at this point right so we know it's diabolo that's quite good but like it isn't going to be able to use any moves Unless Turby is like here, have my size munch again, right? Like he's, yeah, hopefully he's learned his lesson. 
At I that point, this so. is a very low impact Calibus. Right? Yeah, absolutely. I don't think Calibus could do anything except something like a Strangle. Strangle on the Mashook makes sure that the only availability is going to be uh, the Feather Gatlings going into him instead of the follow up uppercuts, right? So instead, brings out the Minotaur, expecting the melee damage coming through. So, uppercut. Oh, no, no, on the two vine. Apologies, of course, on the two vine. But maybe expecting the wind damage was that what I meant to say. But instead, the noxious bomb, just to make sure in case the minute throw came in. But it goes for the two vine, just to try to make sure the uppercut is potentially in a three window kill. I'm not too sure about the nox bomb. I think the nox bomb is covering swaps too, as well, right? Like the very obvious, the most obvious play on that board turn one is to uppercut. Uh, two vine. So if uh, the Minotaur maybe comes in that side, that's when you want to double with Nox Bomb. Turby also just like really doesn't care that much about Calibus. Uh, like it really doesn't. Now that he knows his Diabolo and it's like weird freeze moves, uh, it's very unlikely that he's going to get value um, by hitting the Calibus. So I think that's fine. I really like the swap from uh, Fool here though. I believe so. This you. Minotaur is really, really nice swapping, but everything stays put. The Toxic Plume just adding a little tick of Toxic on the Minotaur. Of course, that bait is going to be keeping the two vine rather healthy. The Feather Gatling, you can't say the same about this Mashog. Bringing down for one more range, but the Black Hole should be concluding the Mashog's time here in the game number two or our grand finals. And that's the one Temptin that was doing the most against the two vines. So already a slight upper hand for Fool. He's doing amazing this round. Yeah, I will say that uh, the one thing that does sort of open up for uh, Turby because Fool doesn't have an Earth Temp, yeah, I was going to say, the Size Munch looks really good here. If Turby's able to get some speed onto this Size Munch through um, Perfect Jab, he very likely outspeeds uh, Black Hole coming from Minotaur. So uh, Fool has to swap a new comma, and that kind of creates a very awkward board state. There's a chance that Size Munch could just kind of pop off this game. I could definitely see that. One thing I will point out, you no longer have any melee synergy, right? So if he was hoping on a three priority size munch wreck, it's going to be a little bit slower than that, right? 50% slower because the Mashug no longer available to him. So, you know, he might need a little bit more than just that single little hook uh, with that plus one speed. Because we saw earlier, right? It was a slingshot. Oh, wait a second, East. It's a, it's a reactive vial size munch. So how is it going to get the speed? Uh, hook is a no. I guess it couldn't get the speed from hook. Yeah. So, yeah, you're right. If it is our Arvel size munch, it must be very tanky then, right? So, I think maybe that's the plan for Turby. It, though there's no Earth synergies, so as long as Minotaur stays at plus one speed, size munch should outspeed the black hole low prio with the neutral prio from uh, size munch wreck. So, mm -hmm. but for fool, that's like this is this is the board you are happier to bring your Calibus into, right? Like he's given you the size munch again, so you know bring your Cala back in. Especially with Volarend uh, already at half stamina and not probably not even dealing that much to your Kala. Especially if it's Arvel Kala, which there's a chance it might be, I think. Yeah, I know, you, we sure. didn't see, we didn't see, uh, but I swear it was an effective damage or perhaps it was a noxious bomb that connected. But I will say, if there's one Tempton that could be wearing the reactive out, it is most likely the Calibus. I just can't believe we, I can't recall off the top of my memory. Uh, but we'll find here shortly, so just in case... Uh, saving the Minotaur down the line. In comes the Yukama, as you mentioned. Just get that big, big aquatic whirlwind online for the following turn. Does the right. size much go for a singular uppercut, or does he just get the hook for that attack increase? Right. Pat just pointed out that the Kala is Diabolo, right? We we kind of forgot about oh, that. Oh, true, true, true. The, the whole Diabolo can see. <laughs> I, I try to wipe all Diabolos from my mind as soon as I can. Uh, but yeah, this is... So he went both of his waters into this. Yeah, uh, I, I don't know if you're fool. I, I don't think you really wanted to, like, like uh, Payne has had a big hole to kind of push into mm -hmm. on the left side of Turby's board, the Volarin <laughs> side. There was mm -hmm. no good swap in for Pi's electric blow. So just like throw it at that slot, take your value, let Size Munch Avola deal damage to your minnow. And you just kind of let you're fine with that. You don't really need to swap. You need to kind of force Turby to trade down pieces the same way. I think uh, so. Now that after this swap, it's like now Platymus looks really good. 
That's for exactly Turbo. what I was going to say. I think it's super straightforward for Turbo to just swap in the Platinum is. Try to eat that Aquatic Whirlwind as best you can because I believe it's just one fourth damage. And you know, you can't go crazy and target the Volarin, right? I mean, it is, or never mind, it's an anaerobic Volarin. I can't believe I missed that from Turby. I'm so used to the other Volarins we were seeing earlier in these matches. But yeah, you can't target the Volarin with Aquatic Whirlwind. You can only target the size much. So he has to be very careful because Platymus is going to be eating it very, very well. So this is a tough turn, you know, the same can't be said about Turby's Tem, a Noxious Bomb into the Yukama looking pretty good, a simple Feather Galling into the Calibus looking rather good as well, so let's take a look, Turby does go for the straightforward play, bringing in the Platymus. Yeah, it looks like Matt G is going to try to eat the load here from Painus, and here it comes in, yep, there it is, Water Cannon right onto it, gobbles it up, uh, let's see, we get the kill here, no, no shot. Uh, tanky Ryukama for sure. Polaroid is Strange Vest and has been strangled. Interesting. Oh, I almost forgot about that. So it does not really matter. I guess the special defense doesn't really apply because of the Strange Vest, right? All that immaculate special defense maxed out, I will say. So 200% increase going all the way into defenses so maybe it's good against the likes of shimurian minotaur but a yukama i want to say if you could get off a, a blizzard i know it's almost impossible being one priority but even a blizzard could do a whole lot of damage but hey speak of the devil here it goes minotaur coming in and catching that your show on his way in so virtually 50 percent reduction once all these toxic ticks have done their job yeah, we do see the Diabolo come in, but the Abrucial will counteract it nicely. This is a very tough game for Fool if with a Strange Vessel around. It's like very, very hard for him to damage him. He kind of has to just try to ignore it now and just double into the other slot. And I, I like that Minotaur came back in. I was going to say earlier, um, one of the things you have to be very careful of, and this is another thing Fool is like kind of a newer player, is you have to be very judicious with Minotaur when you decide to swap out. Because this Minotaur has a very different range of like powerful things it can do when it's minus one speed versus when it's plus one speed mm -hmm. like uh, if this if this minnow goes to plus two from this rusher all of a sudden now it's looking at the point where like it might be able to actually outspeed turby yeah i right? think so too so hey we did see how size ones got frozen in the game number one trying to do a little bit of a repeat but the black hole might just be catching the size ones but unfortunately the reactive bile oh. keeping them at bay right it's only be going down ever so slightly so a little bit under that 50%, but if without that reactive vial, most likely put it probably killed. Uh, but at the very least, you do remove that reactive vial synergy, or not the synergy, but the nullification, right? So something like a tsunami the following turn might just do a good amount of damage. Will it kill? I don't think so, because Calibus isn't the strongest in the bunch. But it's still uh, damage so sure. nonetheless. I think I think Fool really wanted to not black hole that because not only does it clear uh, the freeze, but it clears the black hole. Except energy, energy manipulation. Manip cool, cool, cool. All right, whatever. All right, that is the first Emanip Minotaur I've ever seen. Let's see if it was worth it because Seismon Drag not even going down. Maybe the Volan could follow suit though. I am pretty sure that Pi's Electric Blow just does more damage there than Emanip, right? He, I mean, he obviously isn't Pi's Electric Blow he's eaming it but like oh man that's depressing yeah that's you know he kind of uh... needed the minotaur as well right he does have the yukama for the likes of mogu but how are you taking down this platymus i guess the two vine but an aquatic whirlwind into the two vine is going to be easily wrapping that up right so platymus is looking like potential win condition for the side of turby you have some toxics for shimurian I'm wondering how else can you deal with the Shimurian. Those are the two Temptums that are really standing out to me right now. Shimurian on full side and Platymus on Turby. Those guys are looking like the possible, uh, you know, the possible end Temptums, if you will, for both of these Tamers. It's going to be cool to see how they work over these. Yeah, for sure. I mean, I, the, the big trouble was that, like, uh, Painus's damage last turn was just so flaccid under the size munch that, mm -hmm. it, like, getting to get <laughs> off that attack is, like, so bad for Fool, right? Like, I, like, I must... Okay, he's Pi's Electric Blow, e -manip, so no bullet, I guess. I guess it's, so. It's Maybe like, that yeah, explains no the yeah. lack of uh, neutrals, perhaps. Yeah, exactly. Van Boulder, Van Yaller, why would you ever run it? Mm-hmm. Oh, my God. Turby... And the Strangle. That is massive. Strangled. 
massive massive play coming out from full keeping that calibus and this is why calibus is so impactful he's just so tanky in the terms of defense in the terms of special defense you just can't take him down so easily and that is huge because if the volar survived that meant that you could go ahead and noxious bomb the yukama if it comes in you could do anything uh on that other side but now you're only forced to get things done with the platinus right though so this shimurian looking rather good is it good enough is the question we will see I'm not sold on the strangle there, to be honest with you. Plus, I, I think uh, they really wanted to um, they really wanted to die on Kala because only getting to move once here. Turby is totally fine to just rest on Buller in this turn, right? Like he brought mm -hmm. in his mom's lunch. Turby was going to rest regardless of whether or not he was strangled, right? So the strangle really actually only hurts uh, Fool here. He can maybe swap out his Calibus, but like I think he would much rather have not he would much rather i think have died on Kala and being able to use two attacks this turn the best thing he can say about the situation is that uh turby cannot just target ukama or uh two bind with a move here so there's a chance that uh the crystal plume gatling could really mess him up but that's not never mind it's it's a uh, not happening it's that a way. tanky yeah it's a tanky yeah. platymus Hitting that little toxin showers, killing the Calibus. Avalorin, of course, not taking too much damage with that maxed out special defense, converting, converting all the way to defense. And look at that, doing roughly 20% on the Shimurian on top of adding that evasion for this turn. So not trying to get away with that CPG coming its way one more time. Let's see what Fool is capable of bringing in here. So you have the two vine, but you want to be a bit careful, right? So this is a tough position. Two vine. Maybe you bring it in, swap in Yukama, but then that leaves Turby. If you just want to double up, you know, something like Aquatic Whirlwind into Noxious Bomb, that guarantees a kill on Tuvine or the Yukama. But, you know, the Shimurin is the bigger, bigger problem. So I'm not too sure if you just want to deal with it first or just try to kill the two Temtems and then just make Shimurin overexert just by itself uh, being on the board for so long. The faster you can get to one ten, the better it is. So Turby, I think, is just going to keep throwing wow. doubles. Wow! What in the world? This special defense on this two vine is incredible. Surviving an aquatic whirlwind by one HP is truly, truly impressive. Turby also has zero special attack on the Platymus. I'll tell you that right now. Oh, does it uh, really? It, okay. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no shot, no shot that Magia. Mad Gia doesn't run offenses on any of his toxics. That's a dead giveaway right there. <laughs> okay, that's, fair enough. That's, uh, for sure. Although, actually, I think he runs offenses on his Platypus, but I'm not sure. Uh, you know, I don't want to get the spreads away. Of course, of course. But hey, speaking of CPG, the last turn, no evasion this turn. So bringing down a 36. Uh, the Eurusol virtually down to 21%. The Noxious Bomb should get the guaranteed kill on Yukama. And then we have ourselves a 3v1 situation. The Mogu's still in the back line. And of course, this is Temtem. So stamina will be a concern for the side of Fool. And little by little, he's going to have to overexert. And with that being said, we have ourselves a bit of a comeback for Turby. So we are heading ourselves to a game number three. This is going to be... It was interesting how it ended up working out for him. Absolutely. But hey, this is it. The time is now. This is our final game of the entire tournament. One tamer will be standing tall after everything is said and done. I'm just excited to find out who it will be. Turby has won a crown in the past. So this is going on number two. So can he lock down his second championship title in our plus events? Or of course, we have a bit of an underdog story. Fool doing an immaculate job this entire tournament run. So hey, this could be a nice little cherry on the top to end it off the way he wants to. But hey, everything does get decided right here, right now. And this is kind of just straightforward. Turby just going with what worked in the previous game, Mashuk, Volarin. But instead of having this Calibus on the entry, he decides to just go whole uh, with the Minotaur starting things off. That does make a lot of sense, right? Like he's going to try and get this Volarin kind of in the ground before uh, it can get off the off the ground with um, the anaerobic bonuses with the Strange Pest, right? Like... Just turn one, I'm just going to CPG, um, I'm just going to CPG Lightning move you. I like, think so. Probably AC Lunge. This is a game where you probably wish you had, uh, not energy manipulation. Like, kids at home, 
energy manipulation <laughs> sounds like it might be good to have turn one mental damage on Minotaur. Mm -hmm. It's not. It's usually, like, most of the time, it is not worth it. Absolutely. He's definitely more of a physical attacker. Of course, a little three priority. It doesn't really make too much of a difference. You do have the rusher trait. You're naturally going to be 50% increase either way. But let's go ahead and find out how this game is going to go down. I am more than excited to find out how everything is going to be concluding. I do say I do agree with you, Ease. This Volarin is not looking too good. If Fool wants to just go gun hole, go all out and invest a CPG and a hasty lunge into the Volarin, can't Turby just go ahead and swap in the size munch, right? Wouldn't that just be a straightforward line of play for Turby? I think so. Uh, the size munch takes a bit of chip to do that. And uh, we do see that like he'll have synergy up for Rex, so he will probably be able to outspeed uh, Black Hole. But there is an opportunity there for him to just kind of stack some damage that way. Uh, like Calibus is not a bad swap into Mishook size munch as well. He has options. Uh, I don't know if uh, Fool has like a ton of experience playing into Saku and just decided he didn't want Turby to have that Tim. But uh, we do see the Bola swap. It is Size Munch. So this is a pretty straightforward play. Let's see what Fool does in response. Yeah, perhaps he caught wind of the swap, but no, going as we said, as we predicted, just going into that size one Shrek. So, not too bad, not too bad. Good swap for Turby, just going with the nice little uppercut on the two vine. The question is, does he go ahead and go all the investment into the size munch? He was killing, uh, he was definitely head hungry for the Volarin. Perhaps it could have been safer to split attacks just in the potentiality of that Volarin swap out. Uh, but hey, working out fantastic for Turby. Now, Seismund Trek is online. You do have the melee synergy, and both of these Temtems do not love to hear those words, right? So let's see what maybe Fool has the potential to swap in. It looks like the double water isn't all that bad. But perhaps John Cena the Mashook could try to predict where the Yukama is coming in and just try to get a nice little wastewater on the entry. That doesn't seem too terrible. If you're Fool and you're faster with Minotaur, Black Hole, than Tuvine, you stay in here. Okay. You're supposed to stay in, I think. But he swaps out. Well, maybe yeah. he just stays in with the Minotaur, but this is with this the is... melee synergy. This might just do the job. It didn't before. Oh, and it doesn't again. Very close, though. So a player read that you can make with Turby is that uh, he does not like to offensively invest on his Thames. That both of those Thames would have probably lived and black hole cpg gets you the kill on size this black hole won't kill i see because of the reactive vial you nullify it up and then the cpg but you know he's perhaps he thought the two vine was faster but at plus three speed it's kind of unreasonable to think that it was faster but maybe he just really wanted to preserve some HP on the two vine. If we take a look at the back line, you still have a Platymus to deal with. And Platymus was one of those troublesome Temtems that really gave him a tough time. Uh, on top of that, you also have the Volgon, right? Two vine just utterly destroys a Volgon. Maybe not utterly, but you know, CPG can't, you know, he can't take more than two CPGs. So yeah, I could respect the decision of full retreating the two vine uh, and just staying in with the Minotaur. Not too shabby overall. You can see the experience of Turby kind of playing out here, though, right? He understands that the way that Fool has decided he's going to kill his Volarend is he's going to lead Minotaur and attack into it. And the way you can see that maybe Fool needs to gain a little more experience is that he kind of just let Turby put 72% onto the Minnow. And he needs to he needs that Minnow to kill Vola. And it needs the Minnow needs to, like, be on the board at the same time as the Vola. Now he's in a position where Turby can just, like, swap into Vola at any point here. And let's see, he does predict that Yukama swap, and so Wastewater, as soon as the Yukama comes in, all the way down to about a third HP, the Toxic take on the size much that can be accomplished as well, but the five finger punch going on the Calibus, we had no idea that's what Turby was working with, and that is rather huge, he didn't have a clean win answer to Calibus, so guaranteeing the kill in the next couple of turns, that is incredible. I guess he did have an answer with the Volgon. I was I misspoke a little bit, but this is a nice little cleaner way of taking him down. Yeah, Volarend also would have just loved to set up on Kalo. Like, mm -hmm. like it's it's not the end of it's a good that he did it. it. It is more of I think a flashy play than anything else. Um if only this Minotaur had a move that wasn't energy manipulation, like purgation or something like that <laughs> to uh 
perhaps deal with the the doom. Uh, but you, you know, we're we're in, we're in the world we're in, so this Minnow is gonna have to do a lot of work. This Chimurian is gonna have to do a lot of work here. Yeah, absolutely. So, oh, that that seismic did some work though, a lot more work than we saw in game number one. Uh, so I'm trying to think if there's anything like you mentioned, purgation on Minotaur. We already said it doesn't have it most likely because of the Emanip. There's nothing else from any of these Temptems, right? I don't recall anything from Jukama, Shimurian, or Tuvine. So I dare say this Calibiz will be virtually dead in the next couple turns. Yeah, for sure. I, I mean, I think what Turby has done in this game is he's kind of gotten all five fingers around uh, Penis right now and is just kind of squeezing him out of the game. <laughs> I do uh, believe so. The Selectite goes on to Mashuk here. I maybe just trying to go for a freeze play next turn. Got the free synergy uh, with two vines, so should be able to get some kind of freeze play going on. Yeah, you know, oh, the refreshing Diabolo, of course, of course, it might be doomed and immune, but it still has its gear. Refreshing Diabolo recovering 40% of the Yukama's HP, which is huge because Yukama was on his way out. One more Noxious Bomb would have done the job, but now it's going to be a little bit more. He has to invest doubling up into it, but at the very least, it doesn't look like a bad board state for Turby, right? Wastewater into Noxious Bomb looking rather good. Of course, you could just swap in two vines, so perhaps something like an uppercut into Noxious Bomb doesn't feel all that bad as well. What are we thinking, East? Just focus down the left side just because the Calibus is on his way out? Or is there any purpose to try to make sure the Calibus doesn't freeze the John Cena? Uh, maybe. I, I gotta tell you, plus, this is looking pretty rough for, uh, for Fool at this point. Uh, there's really no way to kill the Bolaren reliably. Uh, Turby, like you said, he's gonna he'd probably just ignore that slot, just throw the Noxious Bomb this way into the Yukama, make it hurt. Uh, and we do see the Freeze come out, so that's good at least. You know, John Cena will be able to pressure the board, but Turby is uh, kind of, as he keeps finding these, like, super effective hits, as he keeps, if you press X, you can see that even though he's down at 10, he has, like, such a wide HP advantage on the other Thames, mm -hmm. and Calibus is a ticking time bomb, right? Like, this thing is going down one way or the other. So in two turns, Turby is going to jump out to a huge HP lead. And on top of that, there's really not a reliable way for him to deal with the Volorend uh, on the side of Fool. So it's going to take uh, a set of bad plays here, I think, from Turby in order for Fool to kind of claw their way back into this game. They do have some plays that like are very uh, obvious to them, like going for Feather Gatling on the Mushuk, but it's just there's not enough health left uh, and just not enough uh, damage left to kind of overcome what Turby has in play. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, very, very well said. As you said, the HP advantage just becoming a little bit too much to overcome for the side of Fool. You could get that turbo going with the speed advantage, but it looks like Turby just decided not to swap anything out. Perhaps just going for a little toxic plume, making sure the Yukama goes down. Uh, it looks like Yukama didn't have too much to accomplish. Perhaps just a good amount of damage on the Volgon, but I think Yukama did his job. It did what it was there for, taking down the size much. And Tuvine potentially on his way out. John Cena becomes unfrozen now. So an uppercut followed by... Oh, this is tough though. I'm not too sure how you take down the Tuvine right right now. But the Calavis, one more time, against the double toxic board Turby has set up, it doesn't get too much accomplished. At the very worst, it's another strangle. You're on your way out. Might as well neglect the turn for one of these temps the next turn. For sure. I, I, so one of the things I really like what Turby's doing is, he, again, he's just playing a super simple game, right? Like last turn, he had the option to swap in uh, the Volgon to kind of prep an electric attack to fight uh, against the other temps in the team. No swapping here. Let's just stay in, make this Tuvine attack the Mushuk like 15 billion times, gets a Rushial off, covers a swap, and now it's like, just kind of wait the game out. Noxious Bomb, builds up your defenses, make a uh, full commit stamina, HP, resources, make him hit me, hit me, hit me, and eventually he's just gonna run out of gas. Yeah, this is exactly what we're seeing here. So that five finger punch making such an impactful performance here. It made it very easy to deal with the Calibus, which means you just focus all your resources on the other Temtem, right? Which is what we saw here for the two vine. Even though it didn't take too much damage, it's still virtually on his way out, right? Three toxic ticks, three times 12.5, way more than 21 remaining. 
Now you know you could bring in Minotaur here, but that just kind of susceptible for the Volar and swapping out. And even if it stays in, it has plus six defense virtually on it. So it's not gonna be taking a boatload from those techniques, but instead decides to just get the Shimuri online. Uh, and again, it doesn't look like it get too much across, right? No true effective damage. You know, you have Sharp Leaf, you have CPG. At the worst, I guess it's just some strong neutral pressure. But as you keep saying, Turby's game to lose. It looks like he might lock this in. But we have spoken too soon in the past. So I don't want to speak yeah. too soon, but we will see. It's looking quite good for him. There is a way. If Fool has Rage on this Shimmerian and clicks Ooh. it this turn, I think... It there's a chance that he could win from there. I could almost see it. Rage or Sharpening, right? Sharpening gets that plus attack Sharpening's and speed. Okay. Sharpening's a little too slow. Rage would have been enough attack that a double would have killed both Platymus and Volgon, which means that um, Turby would have been kind of on an island with his Volarin against uh, three Thames, I believe, on full side. Uh, but now this is going to be a bit of a tricky spot here. Um, Dubine is down. It is going to get Feather Gatling off before it goes down. So Feather Gatling CPG, pretty strong here. I think if you're Turby, you're happy to just leave on the Platymus, give up your Volgon, and then Mom's Lunch the Tremurian again the next turn. Oh, you no, know, he decides he's going to just stay. I mean, look how tanky this thing is. Yeah, very tanky. Perhaps just trying to go with the good old game plan, right? He just Yurushul to the left, Yurushul to the right. As long as he's going to be staying alive, a Yurushul is available to him. So might as well, if you don't have true effective damage, just get it done with Toxic Ticks, right? We've seen it time and time again from the likes of, you know, the great Matt Gia in the past. So Turby getting a little page from his book in the past. So look at that. Little by little, the Shimurian will be going down. If there's one Tempton that could make a difference in the current board, it will be Minotaur. But we know Aquatic Rowan is online. The Minotaur just at plus one speed. Can the Minotaur one-shot the Platymus before the Aquatic Rowan is the question? I think, I, I think yes. so. But maybe the Noxious Bomb might just be enough for the Minnow. We will see. Yeah, that was a good That's a good kill there. Uh, they have to rest here on Chimurin, I think. Okay. Oh, it doesn't that's kill. A, that's a smart rest. Now, attack, attack on the Volgon. You can outspeed the Volgon here. Kill yeah, double. this ended up you being probably... rather close, huh? Uh, sort of. It, it's... I think we know it as Emanip, right? So maybe Emanipping the Volarin and hoping it does a ton of damage to itself is the way to go. Yeah, absolutely. It is his win condition. There's no way Shimura can get anywhere close to chipping away at this Volarin. What are we looking at? Yeah, 200% defense virtually with that Strange Vest gear. It is going to be a huge uphill climb for the Shimura once the Minotaur goes away. Uh, but yeah, you do have to maybe go with the Volarin or just double the Minotaur and then the Volarin doesn't overexert hugely. Uh, it's pretty much just sitting pretty, right? You can just rest the next turn and then little by little Noxus Bomb Toxic Plume. But going for the hasty lunge on the Volgon, that is interesting. I like it. I think he has to try and kill the Volgon. It doesn't work though. Unfortunately, maybe the Black Hole would have outsped the Volarin there and done more damage to the uh full on but that's gonna be it for full i think good run second place nothing to be uh ashamed of there absolutely but hey more importantly turby locking in that championship crown as you said fantastic run for full making it all the way to the grand finals on i believe his second ever tournament so just resting all around and the final toxic tick will do the job so ladies and gentlemen we have ourselves the champion for this plus tournament 53 congratulations to turby